shop floor systems, a lot of systems, what will happen is that you'll buy an external shop floor system. And basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to track time, you're trying to track the material requirements that you're consuming with it, and you're trying to then track what you're producing with that. And you also want to relay work instructions, and you want to be able to make it so that you can take, for example, the labor of that one particular resource and maybe spread it over multiple um, production orders. And if you're tackling it from a single production order by production order um, type scenario, that gets really hard because typically you're using journals or you're using screens that are very focused on one aspect, meaning when I want to consume an item, I click on this screen to go consume that item. When I want to say I'm done finishing this item, I go to a different screen to do that. And that's what shop floor control systems or what we generally call manufacturing execution systems really tackle as part of that. And because you have one interface, it's generally easier for an employee on the shop floor to be able to actually go through that particular production process. And as you guys would guess, because we're doing a webinar on it, we also have that capability inside of Dynamics 365. So I'm gonna go into my job card terminal. Just to highlight this, you can kind of see those capabilities. I'm gonna click on my job card current uh, terminal and I can set up different types of views basically for this, meaning maybe I just want a terminal so that when people walk in, they can clock in or clock out with a badge number so I know that they're actually in the building. I can then also do, for example, production. So as they're doing production operations, we're tracking then the time against that particular operation, the start and end time, to then apply that labor rate, obviously, then to that production process. I'm gonna specify all here, and I'm gonna pretend that I'm polishing worker one uh, inside of this particular resource group. And this is typically what you would then see that would be on the shop floor after you configure this to then interact with from an employee perspective for the manufacturing. So what I could do here is I could go ahead, click on my personnel number, take my badge number, scan it with a scanner, go ahead and log in at this point, and all the different production operations and the sequence that I should be tackling these operations is highlighted then inside of this screen. So I can see, for example, what product, what task or job I need to do to do this particular process, what my next operation is going to be um, as part of this particular production process. And in my manage activities up here, what I can do is I can view additional information as well. So for example, I could look at my logbook to see the time that I've actually gone through and allocated towards specific jobs or towards specific clock in and clock out operations. I can actually go ahead and specify as well, maybe that I need to help somebody. So on my activities, I could actually go ahead and assist another production resource that's in my work cell and then capture that time so that the cost of that particular material that we're producing um, obviously is more expensive because we have two people that are working on that. So then as well, if you're standard cost, we can do reporting on variances that are related to it. I can also do things such as bundling of jobs. So I can highlight three jobs that I start all at once um, because I know I can actually, as an employee, do all three of these faster by bundling them and then spread that cost of that labor across those particular production orders. And there's lots of different setups that we have then that drive how does that cost get allocated? Is it weighed? Is it one for one? You know, What are the setups that really drive that? So a lot of great capabilities then inside of the shop floor capability here. And then finally, the example, I'm gonna go ahead and just start an operation, just show how easy it is to go through it. One would be, you know what? I wanna produce this particular product. I'm gonna start on this particular operation. I'm gonna say, I wanna do 184 of this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start this job. And at this point, if I had any type of work instructions that were required, on here on the far right, we're going to see that it would actually pop up then with any of the documentation for those particular work instructions that you may have to go through that production process. So I start my job, I have my work instructions that I could look at, I start working on it, I'm done working on it after a period of time, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna report some feedback, I've finished of these right now, 10 of them that I wanna have somebody go ahead and move, 
10 of these particular product. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay to produce that product. And then at this point, it's going to do the picking and all the additional information in the background that I may need to go through and then produce that particular product and then put that into inventory as part of that process. So a really easy way to report feedback consume items, start a process, look at the work instructions, and not have to move to 16 different screens to be able to do those types of interactions. So very powerful capabilities then inside of our shop floor uh, control.